But there's this rumor going around that they they want to raise taxes and they're going to go after Wall Street. And they were talking about, you know, raising, you know, a, a fee per every transaction that you that you do. That means it could raise rates to like almost like 50 percent, like almost 50 times what you're paying now. Do you think that's going to really come to fruition? Did you hear anything about that? You know what I'm talking about? Well, they've been talking about a transaction tax for many, many years, and they have a transaction tax in different places around the world. There's a couple of different potential outcomes here. If the Senate is locked and slash blocked, there will be no chance of a transaction tax going through. I just don't see it happening. Um, I do think that there's going to be a lot of pressure on this administration to, you know, obviously find money somewhere. And the easy answer is, well, you just throw a transaction tax out there. Um, as somebody who's in this industry and who's somebody who trades a lot, you know, I think it would be really, really a bad move and it'd be in some ways disastrous. I mean, of course, we'll get around that if it happens, but it's a huge mistake, but not for the reasons that, that everybody, I don't think it's for the reasons everybody else thinks. For me, the problem with it is it's a liquidity drain. And if you want to be the center of um, of, ec of true economic development. The wonderful thing about America is that in the U.S., we are the money center of the world. We are the we are the place where the world comes to seek investment, whether it's going public, whether it's private equity, whatever it is, whether it's debt. We are where the world comes for a gigantic pool of liquidity to fund, you know, innovative and creative ideas. That's why. You know, except for a couple of really huge Chinese companies that have that have done well, mostly all of the quote unicorns and all of the kind of the digital monopolies, they all started here and they continue to start here. And ever, most of the new explosive companies are all U.S. based, and that's because we have the flow of money, we have the flow of liquidity. It would be crazy from a long-term economic perspective to run the risk of jeopardizing the pool of liquidity and the flow of money. Because because you suck out liquidity with horrible things like you know idiotic transaction tax. Now that said, I'm all for you know a a I'm all for a fair tax on corporations. I'm all for a fair tax on wealthy individuals. You know I'm not I'm not opposed to people paying their fair share. I'm just I think a transaction tax would be a monster monster mistake. No, I know because they, well they because they look at it. How many transactions are traded a day on the exchanges? Um, I don't know the actual number of transactions. I can tell you that um, last Monday, so a week ago yesterday, it was the busiest day ever in the world of options and, and I believe in futures as well, but I can tell you options for sure. So in the derivative world, we traded just under 49 million contracts. Um, now that's not trades, um, but I would assume that it's um, over the course of a day, it's probably you know, somewhere between 50 and 100 million trades, I'm guessing. Right. So if they put a $50 transaction on oh, every Oh, it's not going to be anything like that. No, no, it wouldn't be anything like that. But whatever whatever it would be. Listen, you know what? There, It's important to have a balance in Washington where, you know, people can objectively look at things. We're a very divided society right now. It's not mm -hmm. a good thing. And we need to be able to talk through things like this because you can be a free market capitalist and also be a social liberal, you know, and, and there's there's a lot of, you know, um, it's crazy to just be on one side of the aisle. Yeah, and, well, and, and so from my perspective, this the transaction tax is a big deal and, and hopefully it won't go anywhere. The lobbies are pretty damn strong from the exchanges and from Wall Street and uh, Wall Street, you know, Wall Street backed Joe Biden in a big way. So I think it's going to be, this was not, you know, Wall Street, Wall Street backed Trump in, um, in 2016 and they backed Biden big time in 2020. Um, so, and they backed Obama in 2008 and 2012. So Wall Street has a history of getting it right. I don't think they made a mistake on this one, you know, with respect to where they committed their dollars to. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, um,
All right. Well, well like I said, uh, that was that was getting people kind of nervous because um, the numbers so that were going out. Nervous. I I own a financial technology company and I own a brokerage firm and and um, this is my business. This is my life, you know. And I love trading and so yeah, it gets me nervous. But we'll be we'll be fine. We'll figure it out. <laughs> well, we always find a way. There's always a loophole somewhere. <laughs> yeah, they'll be we'll be fine. So Tom, tell us a little about uh, anything new that's going on with Tasty Works new platform. Sure. Well, thanks everybody for. Um, Hanging out with us. Hey, hey, Fausto, do you put your video on here? Um, I yes, we could if you want. Yeah, I didn't see your video, but I think people like it. There you go. There you are. Okay. Are you up? You don't put yours up there? Okay. No, I do. I do. Um, okay. My name is Tom Sosnoff. If this is your first time um, with me, great. Thanks. Appreciate you coming out. We uh, love the support and the interest and the engagement, and it's super cool. And if it's your first time with me and Fausto, that's awesome. Like Fausto said, um, uh, we've been friends, we've been doing stuff together for, you know, almost two decades. And um, since we originally built Thinkorswim years ago, and then obviously Tasty um, in the last decade. Thinkorswim was a decade from 2000 to 2010, and then Tasty from 2011 to 2020. Um, and so if it's your first time with us, you know, welcome aboard and, and uh, thanks for spending, you know, an hour with us. Um, on the chat today, Fausto, Scott, Ryan, and Chris are on. Those are three people that run our trade desk in Chicago. So there's a few hundred people on this chat. So if you have any questions at all, Scott is the CEO, Ryan and Chris run the trade desk, and um, you're more than welcome to ask them questions about anything. You can ask questions about margin, you can ask questions about fees, you can ask questions about accounts, you can ask questions about strategy, you can ask questions about really risk, anything you want. We're a very transparent company, nothing's off limits. Fire away, those three guys are on, so Fausto and I can can uh, you know, can, can really give you a good talk and we don't have to sit and watch all the questions and things like that. So uh, so just so you, in case you didn't know, Fausto, those three guys are on and they're, they're um, they'll answer every question that comes in this afternoon. No problem. Okay, and so at Tasty, um, well, you know, we've we've continued to do what we do best, which is gear ourselves up for, you know, a continuation of the growth in the derivative space. Um, I believe, Fausto, that that stocks have gotten very expensive, and unless they make stocks more tradable through splits and stuff like that, like you saw Neo this afternoon, the last couple of days, has been trading, you know, three four hundred million shares a day because it's a forty five dollar stock. What right. we need is more forty five dollar stocks. <laughs> You know that they, they traded 333 million shares yeah but but we would do that much business with a lot of stocks if they you know if they were cheap you can't trade 300 million shares of amazon nobody's got the money right. um so i think you're going to see a continued move towards um uh a continuation of the move towards um uh towards people using options and futures and options on futures and then a little bit of stock trading, obviously, on stocks like, you know, on NEO and stuff like that. Well, um, let me ask you a question, Tom, regarding yeah. about that. Do you find that, because there's another question that came across and someone's asked me this. Do you find that 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 uh, people that trade options are causing these stocks go up because they have to cover that option? They have to do good on that option? Some people will buy a big option play and no. then obviously they have to cover themselves or is no. it because I'm seeing a, a, a shitload of short squeezes going on. Yeah, I don't know about you. No, I don't. I mean, I know I heard that when they said SoftBank was in there buying all those tech stocks and buying, you know, a lot of calls in those tech stocks. But no, I don't believe that this is a gamma generated rally. This is a this this rally that we've just experienced is a legit move based on people trying to, you know, they're they're not they're 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 racing what what a lot of people believe, Fausto, that there is going to be kind of a economic bomb, but a good kind of a bomb, like like an explosion of the day you can get out of the house, the first thing you're gonna do is spend some money. You're gonna go on a vacation, you're gonna buy the things you haven't bought in the last year and a half. You're just gonna, you've been saving, you, you can't spend money right now if you wanted to, mm -hmm. you know? So so the thought is that there's this, this kind of economic bomb sitting out there that's just going to blow up and and it's going to be you know reflected in stock prices and i think people are thinking that way you know with respect to the markets and that's why they're buying this up i think they're you know i think originally they looked at the pandemic as a 
as a binary event, which means a couple months after it started, okay, we're going to be out of this thing because it's um, because you know we'll have a cure, we'll have whatever, it'll go away, we'll have a vaccine. But now I think they look at it as a, more of a long-term endemic. But at the at some point, we normalize way more than we are today, and that goes into the stock market and creates a a real panic of buying. And so I think that's the reason for the rallies, not not option gamma.